you need to know about this band who started with Billy back in 1971 because it's not that history was written wrong, it just, it wasn't written. So, we're here to write it. everyone it's not every day i've got a special uh vip music giant yes he is he's uh larry russell and let me tell you he's a producer he's a writer he's an audio engineer you name it he's done it he's lived the music and he's got a brand new cd i'm wonderful i'm so happy i'm glad this is happening oh the cd is it just was released a few days ago and uh it's selling like crazy uh, people are just are, so interested in seeing what this band was, what it is now. And man, it sounds so good. It's pristine. It's big. It's uh, it, it, Elio Pace, who produced it, did a wonderful job. Oh, my God. The band is great. It's a live recording from the bit end from uh, 2013. But we had all the elements on tape. He was able to take everything. He brought it to his, um, his engineer in the UK and somebody named Tony Draper, I believe his name is. And uh, the guy who is um, uh, who was mastering it, I can't, I don't have the credits in front of me, but he did a great job. And uh, everyone's so, we're thrilled, actually. For 50 years, nobody knew who this band was. It was Billy Joel's first band. Uh, not much was talked about, but it was the band that got his breakthrough recording at Sigma Studios many, many years ago, 1972. And after that was recorded, a song called Captain Jack was released. It was taken from the event and isolated and played over and over again. And the whole uh, Philadelphia was calling in all the time, requesting it so many times. More song, more. It was the most requested song on on WMMR's playlist uh, for uh, more than Freebird and Hey Jude, believe it or not. Um, so yeah, so we're all going nuts about it because we can't believe it, it, that it's just happening all over again. But even even a be, in a better way because it's us. I gotta say, Larry, that's fantastic, and I'm saying the other guys in the band, they must be totally thrilled now because they're getting credit for what they did with Billy Joel being in the first band. I mean, to me, you're telling the world something, as you said, that not everyone knows. But when they hear the CD or the download, they're gonna, it's gonna blow their mind. You're exactly right. Here's what it looks like. That's fantastic there, Larry. And I just want to say they can get that from leopace.com. They can get the download or the CD. It's so easy to get. Uh, he'll ship it out to you for a few bucks. Uh, but I think uh, the, the download is simple, right? So it's so good. I mean, people are saying people are now calling it a masterpiece. I mean, that's that's the greatest compliment you can get. You guys playing live, what is it when you guys get together and play live? It's that magic, isn't it? It's, a, it's like it. we don't even have to think about what we're playing. It just happens. It's instantaneous. It's like it was yesterday. It was like 1972 all over again, but better. I think everyone's improved. Everyone's better players than they were even in 1972. And we're older, but we're, we're, we sound great. When you hear this recording, you will know exactly what I'm talking about. Uh, you will want to buy it and uh, you will urge everyone you know to buy it. 
Now, Larry, I want to ask you, when you were back in Billy Joel, what was the biggest concert you did? You did one big musical concert. Like, there was how many people there? Just we did. describe that. You know, I, I heard uh, we played at the Mari Soul Festival in Puerto Rico, and that was, I think, about 20,000 people. Uh, and it was the first time we played in front of such a large uh, crowd. And I wasn't so sure whether we'd do well, but we got two encores for an opening act like that. When, you know, we're opening it for Rod Stewart and Savoy Brown and bands like that. We did really well. Oh, my God. And we had to resort, actually, to a, a few cover songs. We even did um, a Jumping Jack Flash by the Rolling Stones. There's a version of that on the on the net, too. You can hear that. But anyway, uh, yeah, that was a big show for us. And it was the, a few days before the Sigma show. So c- combined with that, it got him his deal with Columbia Records. As I said, I want everyone to go out there and buy it. They don't have to wait to download all the physical CD. Now, isn't it great that when you look at your musical history, I mean... How great is it that you've been in music all your life, right? And you were in a band called The Age of Reason and you were the drummer. That's right. What a fantastic journey it is. And you've played and recorded or whatever celebrities as well, some of the biggest celebrities in the world. I mean, I started out with a drum set that my aunt bought for me. And I practiced every day after school, came back, played drums every day. Within six months, I was in a band. That's pretty good. Um, And then from that point on, it just escalated. I was in more and more bands. People wanted me to play drums with them. Then I joined the Age of Reason. And we got our first record deal, We United Artists. I mean, I was, how old was I? 16. And that's when I met Billy Joel. Because our band opened up for the Hassles, which was his group. And damn, that's how that friendship started. Unbelievable when you look back at your career. You've got to be on top of the mountain now, for sure. I feel that. I feel you're right. I, I, I can't even sleep. It's just so exciting. I get phone calls for uh, interviews all the time now. I'm getting calls from people that I don't even know. Uh, and emails from people who they just want to know more about my 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 life and my career and I'm being rediscovered. I feel like I'm being reborn. That's how it feels. And I'm so happy. I know you've been working with Ace Freely. I know that you you've worked with the mamas and the papas, like the sixties bands and that who was your favorite sixties band that you actually met or played with? I think it might've been the mamas and the papas because um, when I played with them, I was in the UK. We did a, a tour of the UK and we also went, uh, I forgot where else we went. Uh, We went to uh, Austria. But um, playing those songs, oh, my God. I mean, it's just, you know, I saw her again last night, you know, Monday, Monday. All those great songs. My God. Do what you want to do. Go where you want to go. I mean, California Dreaming. um, The list goes on and on. But John Phillips was, was the genius and the brainchild behind all those songs. And he treated me so well. I, I was I was in the band for about a month or two. And, you know, we just did a tour. And then that was that was pretty much it. But, yeah, I would have to say that was the highlight at that time. That was 1991. I'm a big Monkees fan, all right? I can't help it. But when the Beatles came right. out in 64, I'm six years old. But 1967, that's my group. You still end up at the Beatles, but the Monkees was my generation group. What did you think of the Monkees? Did you love them? I really liked them. Um, uh, Peter Tork was in my apartment once. Uh, he was looking for a bass player. And uh, I think he was looking for a band at that time um, to back him up. And he came over and um, he started playing piano. He started playing classical music on my piano. And he was really funny. And uh, he was really, really great. I don't think he liked me much. I mean, I think I mean, in terms of styles, I think that he thought maybe... Oh, we both thought each other's style was going to be, wasn't what it was, but, but we got along great, you know, we just had fun. Did you meet any of the other monkeys? Did you meet the other three during your uh, career? You know, you know uh, not really, but um, wait, let me think. Uh, Mickey Dolenz, 
I think I met him once at the China Club a few years back. Um, and then who else was left? It was... Um, it was Davy Jones and Mike Nesmith. Oh, Davy Jones. You're right. But he passed away, of course, you know. But that's a shame because he was great. He was a great singer. Um, I know. <laughs> I know that's your band. I know. I got to say something nice about them, don't I? I've got to ask you something. Since you mentioned it, right, we're having a laugh. You got to say something about Mike yeah. Nesmith. He was a pioneer. Yeah. I, I, I have a lot of friends who loved him. Um, and he won some great songs for other people as well. He did. Yeah, that's he right. Linda really Ronstadt, different writer. drum. Yes, different drummer. That's right. What, and what else did he write? He, uh, there were some other hits. Oh. Don't worry, I want to ask you know. about the Beach Boys. I'm too old to The you. Beach Boys. Love them. Love the Beach Boys. Who doesn't love the Beach Boys? We opened up for the Beach Boys when I was with uh, Billy. The night before we played the Marisol Festival in 1972, it was April 1st. We played the Mi Miami Convention Center with the Beach Boys. Uh, do you remember that band in 1972? Um, I do. They had a guy named Ricky Fatar on drums. Ricky Fatar played the drums. Um, um, what's his name? Was uh, Brian was not there. The car was there. And um, and somebody else was there, but it was really a good band. Um, it was great. So we played this huge place. It was hey, really, really listen, wonderful. I don't want to bore you, but I got to tell you, my most famous Beach Boys song is Help Me Rhonda. <laughs> That's my number one song. Right. That's a great song. Um, and uh, uh, the guy with the funny name sang that. Um, the Cousin. Yeah, Wasn't that's right. Cousin? Exactly. Al Jardine. Right. Help Me Rhonda. That's right. Yeah, great, great song. Oh, great vocal. I, oh, you know, God, Larry, I can hear it right now. You know what I love? I've got an appreciation of the 60s because I'm a baby boomer. And you're going to understand here in Australia. Me too. Yeah, I know that. But listen, when I went to school, I wasn't concentrating on school. I was concentrating on everything that was coming from the US, everything that was coming out from the UK. And when I went to school, all I did is focus on music, the news, what was happening in music. So that's why I could do interviews. And my wife said, how yeah. come you've got all this pop culture around you and you know everything? I said, because I didn't concentrate on school. I concentrated on the music from when I was seven years old and what was happening in the world. Because here in Australia, we got the news six months later. You've got to understand that. There was no internet, no nothing. It came from the print or the television, but we were always behind the eight ball by six, six months. You had your sights set, didn't you? You knew exactly what you wanted to do. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. And, and you're and you're you're into over eight hundred interviews. Yeah, I that's right. I'm at eight hundred and ten now. I'm going for the big thousand. There's only hundred ninety to go. What number am I? Eight ten. You're or about eight eleven. You're eight hundred and ten. But let me tell you something, Larry, and I mean this sincerely. Having you on the show to me is an honor, and I want you to know that. You're one of the greatest musicians out there that I totally highly oh. respect your career and what you've done. Thank you. I'm glad you do. I, I don't even think about my career much. Maybe uh, maybe I should. But, um, you know, when you're in it, you don't think about it. You just do it. You yeah, I totally really, agree. But the great you know, thing people is... People ask me, how do you play like that? You live the rock and roll dream. You know, you live the re you're the real deal. You live the rock and roll dream. If you look back at what you did, you couldn't do it now. You know what I mean? It's like yeah. you're there in pop culture, whether you like it or not, and especially with Billy Joel. I mean, you know, that's I, I huge. Think, thank you. I, I, I think you're right. Uh, again, you know, I don't sit around thinking about what I've done in my life. I don't. I, I don't ever. Sometimes people have to remind me, hello, knock you on the head and say, Larry, you're like part of his, his history. You're part of Billy Joel's history. Uh, and I never, ever, ever think of that. I guess that is my legacy. That is something that everyone's going to know about or remember about me after I'm gone. But, um, and I hope that's a long time from now. But, but as I said, the best thing know, they can do I'm now in, is I'm go and buy the CD and the download. Long, long time. The Sigma reunion live in New York City. That's it. Hold it up there. We want everyone to go and buy it. As I said, you can buy it. It's available. Elliepace.com. Where else is it available? And give us a few links too, Larry. Only through Elio. Right now, at this point, here's look how look how beautiful it looks. You know, Elio quoted me. I said that uh, in the beginning of the record. You'll hear that I framed I framed the audience. I told the audience that 
frame the story. You know, I, I just said, this is, I said, um, you need to know about this band who started with Billy Joel in 1971, because it's not that history was written wrong. It's just that it wasn't written at all. So we're here to write it. That was kind of a, a tough, tough way of saying things. That's an amazing story, Larry. And I just want to say, I can't thank you enough for being on the show. Thank you for asking me. And I'm sorry we it took so long. I know uh, we meant to do this about a year ago, but then the pandemic slowed us down. So thank God you're around. Thank God you're around to do it. And I am. But let me say this, Larry. You know what? That was for a reason, right? And I'll tell you the reason. Because we're yeah. doing the interview just after your CD's been released. So it was meant to be told, now. It was meant to be now. It was meant to be. Uh, yes, it was. You're the best. There's nobody better than you at this. Really. You're so, you have such heart. 